First of all, I'd like to point out that oh, over 30 jurisdictions already tax soda in one form or another, so this is hardly novel. And second, the idea about uh, taxing soda, as I indicated, is widely uh, seen as itself a lever uh, to lower overweight and obesity among children. The, um, the idea of taxing soda, uh, as I said before, is entirely complementary with our goals. Right. Um should I respond? Yes, please. Go ahead, Ellen. Yeah, I mean, uh, the first and foremost, the initiatives I outlined, we think will have a far more reaching impact across the board in D.C. than any tax ever would. But this is not a common tax. As a matter of fact, the tax being outlined by Mrs. Che is very uncommon and is very significant. You know, you could be looking at as high as a dollar forty-four more a 12-pack. And, you know, furthermore, you know, I have CDC data that shows that the two states that currently have the tax that is being outlined by Mrs. Che ranks in the top ten highest states for obesity. So clearly this tax is going to not work. Clearly um, it is the wrong time in in the city to put new taxes uh, on the working families at the grocery store. I'm going to let Mary, I want to let Mary Che respond to that as well. But before, Ellen, before um, we wrap up that particular topic, would, would it be all right if the tax were more broadly distributed. That is to say, I don't know, potato chip makers and the people who make all my hostess ho-hos and things like that. If the tax were on them more generally and maybe a less of a burden on the beverage makers, would that work? Listen, I think you got to you can talk about the burden on us. I think you have to look at the burden on the working families of DC and the impact this is going to have. This is significant. Yes, to single out one single grocery store product is bad public policy. I mean, so you know, that is a full policy debate that I think deserves a full debate, and um, we hope the city gives this issue time and that it's not an amendment to a quick budget process and that it's fully vetted and that the economics and the impact on the working families um, are fully understood before you may, you know, before the city moves forward. Well, yes, I'd love to respond to a number of those points. First of all, in terms of, uh, of, of being fully vetted and, and having a hearing, uh, Council Member Jack Evans, who heads the uh, uh, the Committee on Finance and Revenue uh, had said that he wanted greater public input. And, and yesterday and today, I have invited him to have a joint roundtable with me next week, the equivalent of a hearing on this, but he doesn't want it. I don't have uh, jurisdiction uh, myself to have such a hearing, uh, but I, I'm more than willing to have such a hearing, but uh, I'm afraid that uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't want it. Now, uh, one of the things that Mr. Evans has said is that this is a bad idea because he likened it to a snack tax that apparently was put in place in the district some years ago. But it's wholly unlike the snack tax. That tax applied to a whole variety of um, uh, items, and it was very vague in its definitions. Also, the tax applied at the retail level. So you had mom-and-pop shops and, you know, retail operators trying to figure out, well, this is subject to the tax, and that's... It, administratively, it was it was something of, of a nightmare. Uh, this tax will apply uh, at the uh, wholesale level as the goods are coming into the District of Columbia. And, you know, I know Big Soda uh, thinks that it's doing the right thing, and that's great, you know, to get uh, soda out of the schools, but we're way past that. We are way past that. 